This time on Graveyard Cars, Brody excels as an up-and-coming painter, making Will a proud papa. He's honestly, he's killing it, and I couldn't be more proud. Mark and Doug head to a massive Mopar wrecking yard to find an A-body for a Graveyard Dreams build. He specializes in Mopar only. But they discover more than they bargained for. Him and Dougie are just two peas in a pod. Those two are related, and most likely in a very good chance, not from here. When Will is left in charge of the shop, Will the number one painter rise to the occasion or end up sideways headed for a guardrail? In one of those mornings where everything's gone wrong. <laughs> you, sir. Find out on this episode of Graveyard Cars. Beneath the fog, behind the rust, sometimes, they come back. There's only one internationally recognized Mopar master, Mark Warman, joined by his friends, family, and dream team, the Ghouls. Nobody wants to take on the stuff that we take on. Reviving the past. 100% untouched survivor. Resurrecting the icons of American muscle. We are the Shaolin priests of Mopar. Uncovering stories. It's the baddest car we have here. And restoring dreams. The most iconic muscle car on the planet. Putting cars back where they belong. On the road. Here we go. Beyond a passion. Oh, that's wild. One man's obsession. <laughs> with Mopar Perfection. This is Graveyard Cars. So today I'm gonna to be primering a 69 Charger converted into a Daytona. Growing up, you always see them in like movies and such. Pretty rare to see, so to be able to actually get to work on one is very exciting. We're gonna be doing four coats of this stuff. It is VP2050 by PPG. It's nice and thick, it lays out pretty smooth. You know, when it comes to Brody, and I'm not saying this just because he's my son, he's doing a great job. We're at year number two this month. And for having no experience to where he's at now, I couldn't be more happier with. It's little things I taught him two years ago. It's having a paint gun in his hand while he does all of our DP90 work. It sucks and you can run the crap out of it, it doesn't matter, it's just having the trigger time. So it went from you know, doing DP90 to going with primer and color, and it's spraying all different types of products, has gotten him to where he's at now, and he's honestly, he's killing it, and I couldn't be more proud. When you are mixing these, I look for a certain type of texture to it, like once it looks smooth, when you're mixing it along the cup and it runs up the wall, then it's just a nice like gray. It's like right now I'm mixing it, it's kind of liquidy. I can still see the numbers on the side. And then as I go along, the numbers slowly start to hide. And that's why I know it's at a good spot. So the way Brody's doing stuff here, it's not you know taught like typically, you know, it just kind of comes with experience. These are the paint cups that we use. You put a little plastic, almost like a seal in there. I don't understand the design quite yet. <laughs> so maybe I spoke a little too soon with, with Brody being on his way. He knows what the mixing cups are for. He knows how to use them. He does it that way and it works and it works too. The last time I poured these into here, I forgot the seal in one of them, so it went all over the cardboard. I laughed pretty hard, but it was a, it was a bit of a mess. Right now, as far as retirement goes, I have all my eggs in one basket. And that basket is that beautiful little brown haired girl of mine, Layla, because it's not looking too promising with the rest. Recently, we heard about a guy up in Canby, little bitty mom and pop type of wrecking yard up there. He specializes in Mopar only. Liberty Moparts is the name of it. It used to look like this everywhere you went. Somebody in their backyard had a wrecking yard. There was always one down at the end of the road. Those things are all gone and swallowed up by the big consolidators, but he's one of the last ones. Are these customer cars in here? No, everything is mine except for uh... The Barracuda back there belongs to a customer and the Dart does, but other than that, they're, they're all mine. Nice. Got cars stashed all around his lot there and he parts them out. He invited us, me and Dougie, to come up and take a look around, and so we did. 
I'm not very good with the customer thing, so I prefer to just... Just do your own stuff and then sell it as a done car. You got car. it. Yeah. That's great. I love that car. And that car. And that car. And that bus. It's usually the road trips themselves that drive me over the edge. I just didn't think about once you get there. He's still Dougie. And you should see the plum crazy little duster back there. Woohoo, it's a sweet one. Let's see what's in the garage. That's a 70 charger. Oh, it is, yeah. 70. I see, yeah. yeah. Oh, those are gold. Yeah, wow. I'm, I'm fixing the. I got a rough spot to fix in the corner. Those are gold. Yeah. That's a five, that 509 that's going to go in the Magnum. This is? Yeah. And what's that one there? That's a 340. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Look this at is... the size of those valve covers. That's deceiving. Yeah. Yeah, this is an original 340 car, but uh, customer couldn't get enough traction, so it's getting a mini tub kit. I got gotcha. you. I love this place. They have such a wide range of cars here. I think we could be here all day and not see everything. It's an original 340 car. Yeah. This still got the VIN? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll be darned. And a fender tag. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And this he... is uh, my No Prep Kings car I'm building. Oh, yeah. You, you yeah. mentioned that. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be fun. 500-inch blown alcohol Keith Black. <laughs> I want yeah. to see that one at the track. Yeah, I've built the whole chassis one tube at a time. Wow. He's building this all by himself in his garage that you would never even think anything about. It just shows you that there's guys out there with mad skills, but they don't just, they're not on TV showing off like I am every day, so you don't know that they do it. But the car that he's putting together in that garage is unbelievable. I mean, like, way off the charts quality. Nice work. It looks That's a mock-up engine. The real engine's over at the machine shop, but... Oh, gotcha. It's about 4,000 horsepower. Auto move. We should be running around a flat four second eighth mile, but uh, this was a real Hellcat. Oh, it was? Yeah. And what's that one there? That one belongs to uh, a local doctor who wow. bought it in college. So now I'm fixing it up for him um, to, you know, just drivability stuff, just finish rebuilding the front suspension so that the... Uh... Nice. I love the A-body cars. I think they're adorable. Mark hates them. So the owner is going to give it to his son to drive in college. So, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Look, I don't hate the early A-body cars. I can appreciate that they were forerunners for where we're at today. I mean, the 64 and a half a Barracuda, right? Had to start somewhere. Sure, it's not a very pleasant car. They're not worth a lot of money, but I don't hate them. Of all the Hemis and 440s and everything you have here and all the cool cars, Doug's most interested in that. <laughs> I thought it was a 63. Said he'd trade a 71 Hemi Cuda convertible four-speed car for one of those. Well, you know, the sad part is I don't think the owner would do that. He's yeah. like Dougie then. Yeah. He's just like old Dougie. What I don't understand is why Doug loves them. Like, unnaturally loves them. And it could have something to do with where he's from. I don't know what the mass transit is on, say, Cybertron. Maybe that's how he got over to see all of his little relatives up there, is, is in a 63 Valiant convertible. I don't know. I have no idea. Right. Despite my, my eagerness to uh, uh, talk him into it, you know, I don't think he would do it. Did you see these hubcaps, Mark? Yeah, Doug, I did. I did manage to see they're those. They're awesome, aren't they? Yeah, they're Dodge Dart hubcaps. You don't see those every day. You sure don't. This is what I'm talking about. Martin's telling a story that's entertaining and worthy of listening. Dougie checks completely. I no longer cares what Martin has to say. He's staring at a $1 hubcap on a Dodge Dart GT from 1963, and he's mesmerized by it. Again, is it shiny? Is it the chrome? What is it that's dragging him to this? It certainly can't be the one of 80 billion hubcaps that were ever made. <laughs> If anybody knows out there, please write me. I'd love to hear the answer. Yeah, I love that. that. But it's weird. It's weird, Arnie. Look when this one that. came up, came oh here, gosh. it was so funny. It was in such poor condition maintenance-wise. It had a kitty litter box on the passenger floorboard collecting the coolant flowing out of the heater core. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta soak it up, right? <laughs> Nervous laughter, recognize it. Him and Dougie are just two peas in a pod. This is why 23andMe was even invented, right? So you could find out that those two are related and most likely in a very good chance, not from here. And I'm not talking about my zip code.
Don't see too many 63 Dodge Dart GTs no. either, do we? Or at no, least whole, or convertibles for yeah. that matter. All right. Laws, no. We're I'm sorry it's a convertible. You can keep it. M-O-N, that spells no. <laughs> yeah. Is this a customer or are you? Nope, that's mine. You, uh, 383 car? 440. 440 car. Yep. Is it an RT? It is. Oh, okay. I didn't see the bag. The 69 Charger RT 440 automatic. It's an air car. It's a pretty darn good, complete car. It's just fun to see those still out there. The ones we see are usually completely restored or not drivable. But one like that is really nice to see still out there. So I drug this one out of the California desert. It was sitting pretty much the way you see it with no wheels. So it was sitting on the ground, no interior, no engine transmission. So I just grabbed what I had laying around here and put it together and we ended up with a car. Getting there, huh? Yep. So nice. it runs and drives. Just the way it is. That's the way they should be. Yep. Run them and drive them, baby. You know, when these cars were built, they were never destined to be multi-million dollar collector cars. They were transportation. And then, you know, all these years later, they're worth so much money. They have a lot of sentimental value to people, and so they're putting a lot of money in them, and now they're pretty unattainable. It's nice to see a guy like Martin. He kind of represents, if we could go back 40 years ago, what we all might be doing right now. We do donuts and gravel parking lots. We do whatever we want with this thing. You know, beer cans rolling around on the floor. Live, live like it used to be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm with you. Doug, you with him? Hell yeah. It's also an original AC car and Q5, and that's what I was talking about with the, it had a black vinyl top, black stripe, but rocker moldings. And the rocker moldings came with it, but I took the one off because it was about to fall off on Pretty its own. Pretty cool. But you know, as rust-free as this car is, no rust in the floors. Trunk floor still gone, you know? Yeah, not something. I swear Mopar sprayed salt on the floor of the trunk before they shipped them. <laughs> Makes you wonder why they had rust when they were three years old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, it's impossible. One of the cars that went right along and is in paint now is our 69 Roadrunner that we took in a few years ago. You guys might remember the 69 Roadrunner when it came in. The gentleman that owns it now, his friend had passed away and he had inherited the car from him. You guys remember back, he came out on the show, talked about the history of the car. This was his car since high school and a vision of his was someday to get it restored to the degree that he wanted it to be. And he was a perfectionist. That's why I sought out this shop to make his dream come true. You know, COVID affected everything. It's really it's slowed down the dipping process, the parts process. It's just slowed a ton of things down. But we got it out there, got the car dipped, got the car back. And you know what? This is a really solid car, minimal rust, very good car to start with. When you get a good car like this, it goes quick. We got it right out to the mudroom. The body guys nailed it, got the car done right away for me. And then that's where me and my team jump in, start doing the priming, blocking, painting, all that fun stuff. So the cool thing about this car is this client traded in one of his uh, 2008 Challenger with 600 miles on it to go towards the cost of the restoration. And if you remember correctly, this is the car that had zero, zero to do with me stealing that Alyssa stole by herself. And then she got caught and got in trouble. And Mark was mad and she lost her driving privileges for like over a year. Good and well, I told you not to drive that car. And that was the most uncomfortable I've ever, ever been working around Mark later that day. It's for real. Yeah, he was that mad. I went home early. Yeah. So when it comes to painting these cars, you know, from 1968 to 71, I have done, I think, almost every color. I mean, because we're only Mopar. But on this F5 medium green, this is the first time I've ever sprayed this color. And, you know, it, in the shade, it really is a dark green. And then when the sun hits it, it's a really light green. It's a very odd color. I think it was pretty popular for like two years. Me particularly, it's probably the ugliest color I've ever sprayed. I don't like any of it. It's super transparent. It has no appeal to it. It's green. Maybe I've done like six green cars in a row, so I'm biased. It's the Ditzler 2024 is the code for PPG, that medium green F5. And we went right to color. The prep work was great. 
It was a super transparent color, probably the most transparent color I've done yet, but we're still talking seven, eight coats of base coat. So I spent the whole entire day just getting the color on the car. Doug, would you like to have this car right here? This one here? Yeah. Yes, I would. Nice. I, I like this. It would be perfect for you, wouldn't it? It would be perfect. Does it have air conditioning? Not currently. Yeah. It was Why? born with it, but it's gone. OK. We can fix it, right, Mark? You know what's funny, Dougie? If you reached in right now uh -huh. and turn that key, that sucker will purr like a kitten right now. That's a slant six. Yep. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. See, here we are again. There's Dougie just magnetically pulling over towards this crap box, A-body car that nobody cares anything about. And that particular one's even worse than the 63. They made 80 billion of these things. These, these are like belly buttons. Everybody had one back in the day. And then you want the Oakland too? I want the Oakland. Man, oh man. This one belonged to an old lady out in Scapoose. Her family finally uh, pulled the plug wires off of it, said it quit running to stop her from driving it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. These are original. <clears throat> yeah, it's original paint, original trim, original rust. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Little four speed RT, huh? Yeah. Look at this, Mark. Had a, had a 360. Yeah. That'd be a perfect manual. car for you, Doug. <laughs> Got strange tasting cars, my friend. Mark likes Ram Chargers. I used to. I know I like some weird stuff in cars, and it drives Mark nuts. But you'll see, Mark likes some oddball stuff too. One year only half door. Yeah. 74? Yeah. SE. It's a good one. Chevrolet had the Blazer, Ford had the Broncos. So Dodge had the Ram Charger. The one that he has up there is a Plymouth Trail Duster, much rarer. They made very few of those. And the one he has up there is the first year edition, the 1974. We opened the door and it had the window frame with it. Uh huh. In the very beginning, they left the window frame attached to the top, and then they had the uh, the main part of the door, upper door frame by the bent window uh, in half, so like that. Interesting. Yeah, so when you open this thing up, this stays here, and then this is still part of the top. Yeah, that is, I bet you get a pretty penny for the doors in that roof. Yeah, I, uh, it's gonna go to a fella in Spokane now. Gotcha. I, I don't, uh, I don't usually mess with anything outside of 68 to 72, but you know, when stuff comes along. Do what you, you know. gotta do, right? Yeah. Well, like this one, I had an open spot on the trailer and a guy gave me a price that was right. It runs and drives, so. Wow. Doug, you like this little car? 70 Swinger 318 runs and drives, needs brakes, fuel system, and electrical to be reliable. I think you ought to buy this old pot liquor. Sounds like there a lot of work. I think this little pot liquor would make That's you a good car. some old school with the blue anodized Moroso yep. valve covers and all. Yep. Nice. That's some old school stuff. Yeah. This what screams 1986. It's so amazing to me, after all these years and with the internet, that there's still these pockets of cars around. When you walk around this guy's property, it's amazing. Barracudas parked under trees, car bodies all over the place. The guy even had an old school bus. I think that these little field trips are great reminders of what we used to do and why we do what we do now. So when you look at these little cars in the trees, you'll see the 72 to 74 Barracuda. I don't know what it was originally, if it was a real Cuda or a Barracuda. But the easy way to tell on that car is the big round taillights, which makes me have to tell a story. Doug had a 1970 Barracuda Lemon Twist Yellow, beautiful little car, 318 four-speed air conditioning, white leather interior, it was a Grand Coupe. It's just cool stuff. And of course, the 70 taillights go lengthwise. He needed a trunk lock replaced in it. We were just kids, so he went to see my Uncle Wayne, the original hater, long before there was any of this player haters ball crap. Wayne was one of the original haters. He'd hate on something just to hate on it. So he put Doug's trunk lock cylinder in his Barracuda. Doug takes off. I'm still there with my charger. I said, hey, what do you think of his Barracuda? Piece of crap. Hate the taillights. That's my Uncle Wayne, one of the original haters. He wanted all hot tubs cold. I'd like to show you trauma, if you got a minute. Trauma? Trauma, that's what I call my car. OK. It's kind of like your Phantom Cuda oh, thing. Oh, I got you. 
So the little 69 Charger that Martin was sharing, saying that it was similar to the Phantom Cuda, he's right in a lot of ways. This thing is a mess. Our Cuda was a mess. It got hit hard. This one got hit, which you call T-boned, right in the middle. So it is like taco shape. If you look at it from the back, the whole side's caved in. I don't know if he has the original engine for it or not, but it is a 69 Dodge Charger RT 440 automatic car. And it's loaded, it sounds like, with a bunch of stuff. 69 RT B5, air conditioning, bucket seat, center console, black vinyl top, black stripe. But have no illusions when it comes to the end value of that versus the Phantom Cuda. The Phantom Cuda had it beat. That's why I did that car. So the Charger's not gonna have the end value. He's doing it because he's passionate about it. I was doing it for a client. Of course, I'm passionate too, but I had a client that wanted the car done. But to put those two cars into perspective, 14,739 69 Dodge Charger RTs with a 440 and an automatic. 108 446 barrel four speed 1971 Cudas made. So the end value, you had it there with the Cuda. But his car will end up taking almost as much work as our Phantom Cuda did. And I know he can do it, I've seen his work. So what primer did you uh, use on the Charger? VP 2050. And the reduction of that primer? Two to one and a half, two parts primer, one part catalyst, half reducer. Just right to the point, aren't you? Let's see what Mark's talking about. Or sorry, scoop. No, just Mark. So at what temperature did you prime at? 70. You sure it was 70? It was set at 70, so I would hope it's at 70. Um, how many coats did Three. you do? Brody, you gotta, you gotta understand, I'm, I'm asking these questions, I know, I know the answers. Mm -hmm. People at home don't, America, all two million people. They just got my answer. Okay. Thank you. Gotcha. So overall, how do you think the car came out? Good. Okay, so the car came out good. God, I, I see what, what Scoop's talking about with you. Mark. I, no, no, I, I get it. I, I get it now, and I, I just, I don't know. I, I think I'm done with this interview. Are you? The car, car looks good. Yep. 70 degrees. Yep. Three coats. Yep. Primer. Yep. Four, two, one. Nope. Oh, yeah, two, one. That's, a, that's unfortunate. Well, I'm the one doing the interview, so. I'm done with your interview, because you Thank clearly don't you. have the right information. Great. Yep. That's a wrap. I'm glad. You can go now. Can I? Am I good, Pete? <laughs> nope. Oh, come on. I've done it so many times on TV for you. One time. It's not gonna happen, Pete. One time. Peter, you're his boss. Do this. Let's go ahead, Oh my gosh. <laughs> So this was a cop car, so when I got it, it had some very interesting graffiti on it. <laughs> uh -huh. I see some of it up there on the top of the quarter. God, the laughing. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can't take the laughing. It's, it's that one flew over the cuckoo's nest laughing stuff. It's wound up on Thorazine laughter. It doesn't make sense. It's so loud. Why is it so Loud. Yeah, but I took off the really good stuff. Oh, okay. You know? well, it, it, they came off with the doors. But, you know, it's it's a great B-body platform yeah, chassis. Yeah, yeah. So one of the last cars that he wanted to show us was a four-door Plymouth satellite. I guess it was a former police car, he said. It's a white car. A lot of the state police cars are white here in Oregon. But anyway, the roof is already cut off. It's already donated to become something for somebody else. It's a true four-door sedan, it's a satellite, so it's got the correct rear body panel on it, and it's pretty darn solid. So this is the chassis that we're going to be able to put together with a real 70 GTX, not compromise any numbers anywhere, take the two cars and build one really, really nice car and have it back on the road again. And I can always, I, I, I left the eight and three quarter in it, so it rolls, obviously. Yeah. I can pick that up another time. That's fine. And, and I told Shane that, you know, this, some, some of the stuff was going to be included with okay. it. Um, but I have three other heater boxes uh, for you, and then there's a trunk lid right there that he wanted for a dart. So at the end of the day, I had a really great time up at Liberty Mopar's. Marty is a really nice guy and very hospitable. I even think Mark was really happy because we found a great donor chassis for the 70 GTX. So, all in all, a pretty great day at the graveyard.
So one of the cars that we're working on right now in the shop is a 70 GTX, 444 speed car. It's all numbers car, but it's a rotten car like all of them. Shane and I, not very long back, were having a conversation about four doors. What can we use off of four doors? There are four doors out there that are available. Two door and a four door are identical to each other, except for the sheet metal that goes on from the wheelhouses up. In this particular case, we've got a 70 GTX. It's rotted off of its wheels, nothing left but a roof and the tops of some quarters and a little section upper cow panel and Dutchman. We went on the hunt for a four door donor car. That brings me to this. In this particular case on the B bodies, if you go into a four door car, the only thing that makes the difference between the two door and the four door is the sheet metal on top of the chassis. So we are rethinking a lot of the things that we're doing and when we can come across a good four door, number one, it makes it purposeful. It doesn't have to just get crushed or parted completely out. You can actually use parts of it. And more importantly, you're putting together a car that will have a lot of original markings in it, a lot of the original integrity that came from the factory. We're looking for a body that is still together, has good rails, has good inner sheet metal floors, things like that, that we can drop our GTX down onto. You know, when you see this car going down the road on the back of our rollback, you would probably think they're taking it to the crusher. Most people would take it to the crusher, but you have to be able to see the diamond in the rough. You have to be able to see the end product, and that's what we have crafted over our years and what I put together in the way of a team is don't walk past anything and say, oh, it's garbage. You can save it all. Is the money there to save it? Is the client there to save it? Do you have the passion to save it? Whatever it is, it isn't easy to get where we're at. But now that we're where we're at and we can see all those things and we can save a four door and make a 70 GTX come back to life, it's just another asset that we have in our tool belt that helps us put these dreams, these icons back on the street again. Still to come. Once in a while, you'll come across a nice four-door. You think, well, that four-door doesn't have any value. It does in this particular world. Mark dives deep on his newest wrecking yard acquisition. It's difficult to find good donor cars. And reveals why this ordinary four-door is an invaluable find. Inner cowl plenum, same part. Cowl side panel, same part. A-pillar, same part. They're the exact same part from a two-door to a four-door. As tensions build among the team. He puts lines in his eyebrows like Vanilla Ice did. He wears chains like a Mr. T starter kit. Is Will being pushed to his breaking point? Every day, why don't you like me? Why don't you like me? Insecure guy. I can't even trust it at this point. Find out when Graveyard Cars returns. You're gonna say it. I'm telling you what to say. Okay. What are you gonna say? Remember, folks, we read fender tags from bottom to top, left to right. Yeah? No? Yep. Remember, folks, we read fender tags from bottom to top, left to right. E87. That is the 440 cubic inch six pack engine producing 390 horsepower. Next. D21. Heavy duty manual four speed transmission. JS29. First four digits of the vehicle identification number. The J means it's a Challenger. The S means it is an RT model. The 29 represents that it's a special edition Challenger, meaning it's got a fast top. Next. V0B. Victor Zero Bravo. The V stands for the 446 pack again. The zero represents the model year of the car, 1970. And the B represents the assembly plant, which is Hamtramck, Michigan. 205606. The unique serial number only to this car. Next. Jumping up a line? If you want to. EV2. We can do the same line again if you want to, too. It's up to you. EV2. Exterior body color, hemi orange. HRX9. Hotel Romeo X-Ray Niner. Mm -hmm. That represents a black leather bucket seat interior. Zero, zero, zero. One piece interior door trim panel. C1. 
Scheduled production date, build of the vehicle, which is December 2nd, 1969. 140607. That represents the shipping order number, which is unique only to this car, which by the way, you'll find it on the window sticker, the fender tag, broadcast and sheet. the broadcast sheet. Next. V1X. Victor 1 X-ray is the black vinyl roof. A34. A34 is a super track pack representing a max cooling system, a Dana rear end with four 10 gears and mandatory power disc brakes in the front. Next. A62. A62 is a rally instrument cluster which also features an 8,000 RPM tachometer on this model and standard on all RT challengers. Next. V51. Power disc brakes. And C16. Center console. C26. C26 is the unique overhead consulette, standard on all special edition model Challengers, has three warning lights, fasten seat belt, low fuel, door ajar, also has an overhead light. Next. C55. C55 represents bucket seats, let's guys on the assembly line know we're putting buckets in this bad boy. G32. Right hand outside painted racing mirror. And G34. Left hand outside remote painted racing mirror. J45. Hood pin tie downs. M21. Drip rail moldings. M31. Belt moldings. N41. Dual exhaust. And N42. Bright exhaust tips, including a through the pan exhaust rear valance. N85. November 85 represents the 8,000 RPM tachometer, part of the A62 package earlier. Go on. R11. AM Music Master Radio. Somebody cut some corners on that one. What else you got? V21. Victor 21? Victor 21. Oh, I love that. That's the sport hood treatment. The blackout on the hood. It's cool. Sexy. V68. V68 means somebody didn't like any of the decal options on this car and went with Stripe Delete. Y05. Y05 is built to U.S. specifications. 26. 26 inch radiator in this case for 1970 with a 440 or 426 Hemi, no air conditioning. You would have a 2998 956. EN2. I'll let you take it home. That is the end of our sales code and the end of this week's autopsy report. You passed. Well, thank you. Now, actually, folks, I didn't pass, and that wasn't a trick. I'll fall on the sword. I did not pay attention like I should have on that fender tag when we were rattling through it, or it would have jumped out at me like it did later when I was watching the scene back. Folks, that car is a real live JS29. That means it's a special edition. On that car, at that assembly plant, A47 is the sales code for special edition. It's not on that tag. It has to be on the tag. Go back and look at my other one, look at my black RTSC 446 pack four speed car I did years ago. It's on that one. Look at all of the SEs that we've got here. It's on those. Why isn't it on that tag? Because the tag is a reproduction. Got past me at first glance. Folks, something to learn out there. Got past me at first glance. I caught it on the second glance. When people make these tags sometimes because they're missing, we've got a broadcast sheet. We know what it has, but it just has a reproduction fender tag on it. It's all real. Not everybody knows what they're doing. So I am going to help him have a new tag made for his car. I usually use Dave Weiss, very smart guy, knows what he's doing. I'll lay everything out for him and we'll have a nice correct one put on. But things that shouldn't be on it, maybe the rear spoiler, because that certainly isn't coded for that originally. I, that won't appear on the fender tag either, but things that should be on there like the A47, we'll make that right. All right, so once we got back with the four-door donor satellite, I turned it over to Shane. Shane went around it like he did on our convertible that we just did, this convertible Cuda, and marked everywhere that he was gonna cut something because we don't wanna spend money dipping it if we're not gonna use it, and specifically saving certain areas that we are going to reuse. That has been done, the car is cut apart, and because I'm trying to share more metal work with my audience at home, I took a minute to walk around the car and show you what we were going to be saving and what we're not and why. It's really very informative. It's what you have to know if you happen to be doing your own 70 GTX or muscle car at home. 
Okay, so now on our four-door donor, we have it all cut and trimmed to the pieces that we're going to be saving to be able to save our 70 GTX, which when that time comes, I will show you how these really marry together. Here it is, 2023. It's difficult to find good donor cars out there. Most of the two-door hard tops or convertibles or posts that you find out there have been beaten to death, rotted off their frames like our GTX. Once in a while, you'll come across a nice four-door. You think, well, that four-door doesn't have any value. It does in this particular world. Granted, not a lot of stuff interchanges from a four-door when it comes to everything from the rockers up. But from the cowl down to here, this is a two-door hardtop. So when you look at the front of that firewall, that is the exact same firewall. If you called AMD and said, I would like a firewall for my GTX, or I'd like a firewall for my 70 Coronet four-door. Same firewall, same frame rails, both applications, shock towers, lower radiator support, all the same. They don't discriminate. They're the exact same part from a two-door to a four-door. Inner cowl plenum, same part. Cowl side panel, same part. A-pillar, same part. Main floor, step wells, under seat pan. It's the same on a two-door to a four-door. Trunk floor, trunk floor extensions, the rear body panel. Look at the rear body panel. Look at that. That's a 70 GTX Roadrunner rear body panel. Inner and outer wheelhouses. The only thing that makes this a four-door is a vehicle identification number and this one area that we do have to change, the outer rockers. If you look right here, this is where your B-pillar would come up for a four-door. That's why you see the footprint of it. The length of the outer rocker is the same from a two-door to a four-door. We could just patch this in and you'd never even know it once the car was all painted, but we don't like to do things that way. That's not exactly the quality we're after. There is another thing that would work, but on a two-door right through here, the outer rocker dips in to make the provision for the quarter panel. We could just cut this and do it ourselves, but we could also put the correct new rocker on it and, and, and come across the same finish line that way. When you look at it, the firewall is beautiful. Main floor, got a big hole in it, lots of rust. Step wells, both sides, we're gonna replace those. Under seat pans, beautiful. Trunk pan, we're gonna replace. Trunk floor extensions, we're gonna replace. And a section, if you look, both of the outer wheelhouses have sections like this that we'll put in. But what we've gained is about 15 to 20 different components that you'd have to go out and buy individually, weld them together, it wouldn't have the benefit of all the original structural integrity that the factory had of putting it together like this. And you'd have more money in it if you could find a four-door like this to donate for the cause. You just moved ahead months in your shop. You've done the customer a favor by doing it this way because now that person can raise it up in the air and see that every spot weld is factory. Every marrying joint is exactly the way the factory did it. There's the motivation behind it. So to recap, firewall, frame rail, shock towers, A-pillars, in this particular case, inner and outer wheelhouses, trunk floor, main floor, cowl plenum, rear body panel. When it comes to the things we have to change though that make this a four-door, you'll see there's no Dutchman panel on here. That Dutchman panel is different from a four-door to a two-door. So we will be putting a new one of those on there. Same thing for the trunk rod braces. These two pieces right here, they are different from a four-door to a two-door. Everything else, we will be replacing things like a floor and the step wells and the trunk floor because of rust. But if it was mint, we wouldn't have to. We would bring that GTX, the everything we've carefully, just as carefully trimmed off of it, in plant it down on this, and you would think this whole thing started life as a two-door hardtop 70 GTX. That's the point, how valuable the four-door sedans can be in today's world, and how much time you could save if you found one like this and knew what you were doing. Stay tuned. Oh, look at him. See, my son with the gold chain. Is the start of Will's week going to end on a high note?
They see I got real work to do, so now it's just hangout session. Then they all stand there and watch. Or get blown to bits by his own flesh and blood. I'm over today. Coming up, when Graveyard Cars returns. It's been one of those mornings where everything has gone wrong. I'll be happy when Brody or Kel start spraying. Kel, the whole, everything about that guy's discount. I don't, I don't even, gold chains. So with all those great things I just said about Kel, there are some drawbacks. First of all, and hopefully you guys can get footage of this so you people at home can really see it. He puts lines in his eyebrows, you know, like Vanilla Ice did. He wears chains like a Mr. T starter kit. And even me not knowing I was filming this this morning, I was out front watching him pull in. I'm like, dude, is your seat broken? What's the matter? He's in this beat to crap infinity. He's got this gangster lean over as far as he can. He's got this loud stereo that sounds horrible. So you put all that together, on top of the fact he loves Freckles, he loves Mark, so I, I can't even trust it at this point. Lines in his eyebrows, dressing like me every day. Why don't you like me? Why don't you like me? Like, dude, I do. You never say hi. Hi. Insecure guy. Am I gonna be able to paint a car before you fire me? Why am I gonna fire you? God, look at him. See, my son with the gold chain. They see I got real work to do, so now it's just hangout session. Then they all stand there and watch. I don't mind it, you know, we're, we're doing good here at the shop. We're, we're painting a car a month, which is great. So I was getting everything ready like I normally do to clear a car and, and the air adjuster valve on my gun kind of froze up when it worked yesterday, which usually means one of my helpers used it after I went home or something like that. But whatever, I couldn't get it fixed. So I had to tear apart a couple of other guns to make my clear gun work. And it's a big car. No vinyl top, transparent color. When you're fighting that much to get a car done, sometimes it's just best just to say, you know what? It'll still be here tomorrow. Ugh. So I have to admit, you know, it's been a great start to the week. You know, Mark was gone. Count is Count, he's weird as hell. Brody did a phenomenal job. And we prepped the car, got it painted, came out amazing. So all in all, it was just a great week. <laughs> New sir, I know what that means. I'm out. I'm over today.